Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London and today it's my real pleasure to interview a book that I have found really fascinating to read. It's called The Law of Misstatements and it's 50 years on from the decision in Hedleyburn and Heller. It's bringing together a collection of academic articles and views from across the world uh, and it's been done by Kit Barker, Ross Grantham and Warren Swain. This is a book which has come to us from Heart publishing which is part of Bloomsbury. Um, the title of the book, Elizabeth and I talked about this before we did the review and we've come up with um, a title for our review of Compensation Culture, read this critical examination of a pivotal case. Now it's not just pivotal of course it's much more than that because it's a substantial case and very well known amongst certainly amongst law students. Let's look at the book first it's got an intriguing cover. It's a hardback. It's law. Heart Studies in Private Law. That's where it comes from. There's the front and there's the side. And then there are a couple of titles in the series. Heart Studies in Private Law. Then the inside cover talks about the 50th anniversary in 2013 of Hedley, Byrne and Heller. And that's the back, which is some detail about the people who've actually compiled this book. There is it at the back of the book... Um, a substantial index. It runs to 350 odd pages, the, the work itself. It's um, got a, an appendix at the back, which I'll mention at the end as well as at the beginning, and that is the transcript of the judgment of Mr Justice McNair in 1960, which <clears throat> actually sets out the case without having to go to the law report. There's the front of the book there, and then we've got a preface which talks in rather general terms, not, not specifically about the judgment, about, but about the effect. Then there are some acknowledgements based really around the views in Australia, because um, this, is, this particular judgment has worldwide application within the common law jurisdictions. There are the contents. You can see the names of the people who've written the various uh, uh, comments. There are 13, there are four pa uh, parts and 13 chapters in total. Then you've got the list of all of the people who've contributed. Large number of people. I can't go through all of them by name. Then a table, list of the table of cases, which you've got there. And then <coughs> the table of legislation afterwards, because this is such an important case. And of course, everybody will know uh, the basis of the decision. And it starts off with something from Kit Barker, Hedley, Byrne and Heller, issues at the beginning of the 21st century. So basically, where are we after Hedley Byrne? Because he immediately mentions Donahue and Stevenson, saying there are a few 20th, 20th century tort cases as well known after Donahue <coughs> as Hedley Byrne and Heller. And he's absolutely right. This is a lovely book. I think, frankly, for anybody not just interested in the jurisprudence of the decision in Hedley Byrne and Heller, but also in the wider context of the history of the common law and where we are to date. Because, as I've said, it's such a fundamental case for anybody who's been a law student, whether you've done A-level law, whether you've done an LLB, or whether you're actually um, professionally qualified. So I think, and obviously that's not just within the legal discipline, because we are talking here about misstatements. In other words, a statement that's made that is not a correct statement, if I can put it as simply as that. However, I'm not going to give it all away because you want to read the book and the judgment. Because remember who they were. Hedley Byrne and Heller. Hedley Byrne were advertising agents in Park Lane and Heller were merchant bankers. Now, what do we say about the book? Because the book is a celebration 50 years on of that momentous, momentum, or momentous decision, if I can call it that. They noted then in the subtitle of the book, you know, if you're a lawyer, you'll know then what all of this is about. Because as the co-author and editor Kit Barker explains, quote, there are a few 20th century talk cases, as well known, or as often cited in Commonwealth jurisdictions as Hedley Byrne, adding that it's been construed as a case about liability for careless words. In other words, what you, if you make a statement which has careless words in it, the question then will be, 
where, whether or not you will be liable. Of course, the issue today will be one of proportionality. And apart from Donoghue and Stevenson, which I've referred to before, uh, there are actually few tort cases in the 20th century that are as well known, certainly as um, Hedbyburn and Heller. And of course, you'd had the earlier decisions too, which you will all, of course, remember, and I'm not going to repeat here. Now, a House of Lords landmark decision is what this is. The case has certainly excited comment and controversy over the years, no less so than now in its 50th anniversary year, because recently launched by Hart Publishing as part of Bloomsbury, the book both commemorates and celebrates the decision, as well as offering up a rich variety of commentary on it from no less than 14 contributors, mainly from the universities in Australia and New Zealand, as well as United Kingdom. But it also represents five of the most important jurisdictions in which the case applies, i.e. the common law jurisdictions, that is namely United Kingdom, the United States of America, New Zealand, Canada and Australia. And the law of misstatements in each of the five jurisdictions is examined in depth and from various perspectives, with a focus on its meaning its influence and its basic concepts, for example, voluntary assumptions of responsibility and reliance. So if you're looking for a first, read this book, because you probably you could well get an essay question, which is looking at the effect of a negligent misstatement, or an innocent misstatement, whatever it might be, careless, whatever the words are that you use, but it's a misstatement, and you may find that something from this book will give you that extra nudge up to the to the top marks. And to say then that Hedley Byrne has generated massive repercussions as well as comment over the past 50 years is the understatement of this century as well as the last. For example, having elevated the importance of the concept of a duty of care, no bad thing actually, it has variously been identified rightly or wrongly as the root cause of the compensation culture. And as this 50-year-old case continues to influence and impact upon modern law, private law, of course, in particular, which is why it's the heart series in private law or civil law, this book provides a cross-section of contemporary viewpoints and therefore a fulcrum for contemporary discussion on the incredibly wide variety of issues emanating from liabilities for misstatement. Researchers will, of course, appreciate the wealth of references contained in the extensive footnoting and also in the 25 or so pages of tables of cases and of legislation from the relevant jurisdictions. As I say, this is a multi-jurisdictional issue, all, all of course based on the common law. Let me conclude by, apart from welcoming this and treasuring this particular book as it's a wonderful little find, I um, also note the appendix, uh, which I referred to right at the beginning, which is actually the end of the book, contains a transcript of the judgment of Mr Justice McNair, which is dated the 20th of December 1960, which makes this book particularly handy for private lawyers, because you don't have to bother looking in the law reports and you've got it all there. You've also got the little bit at the end, when they start, when, when councils start discussing with the judge what's going to happen with the money and everything else, so it's worth having a look at that bit too. <coughs> now, if you need reminding then, the details of the case um, and all the other uh, bits and pieces that go with it, you've actually got the full transcript actually at the end, and it's ideally um, actually something you should read first rather than last if you want to refresh your memory on what happened. The publication date is cited as at January 2015. We'll have another quick look at the book again. Lovely uh, maroon cover, I think it is. There's the, uh, the actual spine. Uh, there's not much on the back, it's just a couple of the books. Just opening it in the middle. This is an article here by Paul Finn, Equity as Taught. There we go, you can see. And then again, you've got a standard, a lot of, lot of footnoting there. But again, you've got all of the interests of the different substantive law areas from, say, equity as a concept of equitable principle and the substantive law area of taught. Limitations on liability for misleading or deceptive conduct, and so forth. Because you've got so much in the book which actually goes to make up, I think, what we, where we have got to so far. And I suspect that what you might find is a little rereading of the issues right at the end, just to familiarise yourself with exactly 
why this case is so important and why this book actually is, I think, a great contribution to trying to understand today where, we, where we've got to with the decision in Hedley, Byrne and Heller. It's something that <coughs> sometimes isn't well taught, if I could put it that way. So this book, I think, will help you if you have concerns about the decision in that particular case. Thank you, though, to the editors, all the contributors, and to Hart and Bloomsbury for producing this for us. It's a deserved anniversary edition. Thank you. Bye-bye.